How are your New Year's resolutions going? Are you doing anything to achieve your goals? I honestly had a pretty rough start into my new year and we have exam phase coming up just after I recovered from a cold. You might still hear it a little bit. But isn't that the perfect time to reevaluate what we actually want to do this year and how to actually achieve those things? As I just said, I have my exams coming up and I would like to kind of pass those, you know? So I figured this is the perfect time to get into scheduling out my life a little bit because it's been a mess. Now I'm gonna be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of schedules. They work for me for certain periods of time and then after a while I fall back into the go with a flow kind of lifestyle which is honestly what I prefer. But for exams it is kind of important that I stick to certain study sessions and that I actually do get my study time in. Besides, schedules are amazing to not only get the things done that you have to get done, but to just generally have a bit more structure in your days and in your weeks overall. So today I just want to go over some basic principles that I kind of overlooked for the longest time when making schedules, which is probably one of the reasons why I hated them for such a long time. And they're in no particular order, so let's just get right into them. Think about what makes sense in your daily life. If you work in 9 to 5, then you cannot plan for other things during that time. Now, let's ignore the fact that a lot of people in home office do in fact do other things during that time, but let's just pretend that is not a thing. Figure out other non-negotiables. Maybe you want to go to church every Sunday, or maybe you want to hang out with your friends every Friday afternoon, or you have uni classes like me. And sleep. Don't forget sleep. A lot of people for some reason don't think of sleep, but sleep should be scheduled before you schedule everything else. A lot of people seem to think of sleep as like an add-on when in reality sleep is so important. You shouldn't plan your sleep around your lifestyle. You should plan your lifestyle around your sleep. Once you're done with that, you have a way better overview of how much time there actually is to do flexible things. And remember, in these flexible time slots, you still need to consider things like groceries, cooking, occasional paperwork, and whatever else there is to do that you still need to do kind of on a regular basis. So the time that is left after you do your non-negotiables is not all the free time that you have. The next thing to consider is that you do not want to blindly copy other people's schedules. Even if they say they're the most productive person in the world, they feel super good about their lives and they're successful and all of that, don't just blindly copy them. And it's really common sense, just make sure you kind of keep that in mind when people claim that they figured out the best schedule that there is on the planet or whatever. So if you want your schedule to work for you long term, then make sure it's actually your own schedule. Okay, now that we took some time to talk about the very obvious things, how do we actually make a good schedule for ourselves? Personally, for me, a schedule is not something that is very rigid and leaves no room for any flexibility. I know some people like to time block every single minute of their day into little chunks like get up, go to the bathroom, get ready for work, have breakfast and all these things and they plan it out to the minute. I like to think of schedules as guides for our days. If we ever get off our path, we can look at our schedule and see, okay, it is this time now, I'm supposed to be doing this and just return to whatever task we are supposed to be doing at that time slot. Now to find out what feels the most natural to us, because I believe that that is a big part in how well your schedule works for you, is to actually do the opposite at first. You just go about your day without any plan, without any schedule and see what you do at which point in time. What that could look like is that you just go about your daily life for a week or two and you try to notice the patterns that come up from just living that kind of life. And then maybe something you'll notice is that you like cleaning a little bit every day before you go to work or maybe you like cleaning just two times a week for an hour or two. And maybe you notice that you like to go to the gym in the morning rather than in the afternoon or in the evening. 
Try to notice these patterns and then note them down somewhere so that you can account for these patterns in your future schedule. Another thing to take into consideration is your energy throughout the day. For me, this general energy curve is pretty well reflected in how I try to structure my days, as in I try to have my classes or important meetings or whatever in the morning, things that need focus that I need to concentrate on. Then in the afternoon, I'll usually be a blob, so I just watch YouTube or I'll do some light reading. And then in the evening is when I do some light focus tasks, as in not super focus heavy, but still somewhat. I'm not 100% certain on the biology behind all of this, and I'm sure it might vary a little bit from person to person, but I'm pretty sure most people don't wake up and feel the most energized the moment after they wake up, and I'm pretty sure most people feel more sleepy as the day goes on. And I think just thinking of when you're usually more energized or less energized, or maybe after which activities you're more energized than others, can be really helpful to structure your schedule in a way that you actually make use of the energy when you have it, and you can make use of, you know, free time, chill time, light activities when you're not so high on energy. And again, a schedule to me is something that gives me guidance throughout the day, not something that I follow to the minute. So to me, it's really important that I leave some time for flexibility because you never know what happens. You might have an off day, you know, you might get sick, something might get delayed, maybe something that you were supposed to study, you didn't manage to study all and now your whole schedule was ruined. Something that has personally helped me with not feeling like my days are too rigid and too stiff and I can't be flexible at all is to not look on a day-to-day -day basis, but more on like a weekly basis. Some activities just make more sense when you look at a weekly overview rather than day-to-day. -day. For language learning, for example, you don't need to be studying every single day. It is important though that you're consistent on a weekly basis. A lot of advice that you hear is that you need to be consistent and a lot of people take that to be that you need to study every single day, that if you don't study for a day, you basically failed, you can never learn the language. That is so far from true though. And unfortunately, this daily consistency leaves very little room for error or for getting sick, for emergencies, for whatever comes up, and it's just not realistic for most people. Weekly consistency, on the other hand, is really well achievable by pretty much everyone. You can be consistent on a weekly basis and this type of consistency leaves a lot of room for you to take breaks, to take a day off, to you know have a bad study session and to still make enough progress. Now that doesn't mean that you study only once a week for 30 minutes because obviously but you know I don't need to tell you that I hope. As long as there is consistent effort that does not need to be daily the trend of progress will be upwards, and that's what we're aiming for, right? So when planning out your schedule, see which activities make sense to have there on a daily basis and to track that you did them daily, like brushing your teeth and flossing, all that kind of stuff, and other activities like language learning that make a bit more sense to track on a weekly basis. And maybe you can even come up with activities that make more sense on a monthly basis. I hope I could give you some ideas on how to improve your schedule for the upcoming week, the upcoming month, the upcoming quarter, whichever time it is that you're planning your schedule for. And I hope your 2023 goals are going well so far. I hope you're making progress because mine are. And I'll see you in the next video.